I don't really know where this is going. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well. Welcome to my kitchen and 2021. I had a little mini break thing. Everyone was like, where are you Barry? I've just kind of been a busy bee. You'll see, it's gonna be very exciting indeed. Hope you had a good Christmas and New Year. Many of you got this t-shirt. I was tagged in so many on social media, like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So if you did get uh, the seal t-shirt or any other ones, uh, thank you so much for supporting me and the channel. Today, we're doing a recipe that's been heavily requested. Yes, I got tagged in this way too much uh, over the Christmas period, and it is something called an impossible pie, right? Apparently these have been known for years. Uh, there's something called Bisquick. I don't know, I think that's more of an American thing that you, you can make a pie without actually putting a pie crust on it that will have a crust on it by the time that it's cooked. Hence the name Impossible Pie. And we're doing a cheeseburger one. A lot of you guys are saying try this out. We're going to do that but apparently it's more common for it to be sweet. You can have like a lemon one, a cherry pie. Cheese my cherry pie. Na -na 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 -na, baby. Let's get going. Can you tell I'm a bit hyper? <laughs> Ladies and gents, this is a pie dish, but today it is not a pie dish. It is our vessel that is going to deliver the impossible pie. So I call this sometimes like a naked pie, okay? I don't know which ones it's going to be. You know when you like make a pie filling and just put like the puff pastry on top? I call that sometimes a, a naked pie because you've just got the lid really. I don't know what this is actually going to do, if it's going to all form around it, because effectively we kind of make a pastry batter that we pour over our filling and then it congeals together and then forms the crust. More like a quiche. But let's make that batter right now. All right, let's get going. The first thing we do is add in our plain flour. Uh, you can actually do all these steps in a blender, by the way. Baking powder. Oh, unnecessary salt bay. Unnecessary salt bay. <laughs> all right, so just like the girl band, we're gonna give this uh, a little mix. Uh, mix it round together. You can see how a food processor would do this much easier. All right, so now we want to add our butter in, okay? And this is a 100% true story. Those of you that have been watching the uh, channel for years, I used to hate doing it. It's one of my pet hates. I've talked about it many times before. I hate doing that rubbing the fingers. Pastry cutter, one of my favorite gadgets ever. So, so good. But again, a blender would bypass this anyway. So blending it in so it's like bread crummy texture. You just go like this up and down. I don't think there's any sort of particular routine with it. It just saves you having to do that sort of thing with your fingers, you know? And that is a good thing. Beautiful, look at that. And can you see it's taken on a slightly more golden color, like it's been lying on the beach a little bit. Uh, that's just the butter working into the flour and stuff. Nice. In a way, that's why I don't get why it's called an impossible pie, because this is sort of is like your pastry. Like you compress that together and you are on the root of pastry. It's now that we add the wetness. The wetness. All right, so let's add that wetness. Uh, two eggs, some milk in as well. Da -da 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 -da. Now this is where it goes out of the territory that I'm used to. <laughs> but apparently we whisk this together and it will be lumpy, but we just need to make sure the egg is broken up, the milk's in there. Oh, by the way, this recipe I'm following is from a recipe website called thedinnerbell.recipes, I think. We'll leave that because that is basically the impossible thing. All right then folks, uh, we are gonna get our filling on. Do you know what, I cooked loads over Christmas. We had a turkey crown with bacon, we had honey mustard ham and mustard beef. Oh, and it was so easier to cook without a camera. I get so used to doing that. Um, but when I'm doing something quite intense, it's like, oh right, I haven't got to stop and start. And I don't have to talk. I don't talk to anyone. Uh, beef is going in. This is some beef mint straight from the supermarket that I put into a bowl because it looks more aesthetically pleasing from a bowl. And we're going to brown it off at first, but then we're going to take it to quite a deep colour, but we'll season it a little bit first too. You see it's starting to brown? Lovely jubbly. This is my top tip for this year. You've probably heard of like garlic salt or garlic powder. I discovered that I put on some roast beef, some garlic pepper. It's basically the same thing, but with pepper. So we'll just add in the salt. I'm now going to add my garlic pepper. Uh, basically, basically, it's amazing. <laughs> da -da. So you want about a teaspoon or so. That might now be a tablespoon. It smells awesome. A little bit of Worcester sauce is optional, but the recipe that I'm following said that, so I don't mind giving my mint some tang. Right, this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna cook this up, just gonna brown it first of all, and then we'll add in some onions. If only there was an easy way 
to chop up onions at pace. Look, it's got my name on it. There we are, lovely chopped onions. Now, uh, the evolution of me as an adult into an adult. From You know, like the whole thing of the, uh, the monkey slowly turning into the caveman to the adult and then to a pug? Yeah, yeah, this is my evolution of a cheeseburger, folks. I, for some reason, love gherkins. I think McDonald's has done that to me. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some gherkins, put them through the Barry Lewis Veggie Prep Kit, and just add that in with the mince. So let me say this before the internet hates me. I mean, there's gonna be people that love me, there's gonna be people that love it, hate gherkins. You don't have to do this. I don't know if it's gonna all go through in one go, we'll try. Oh, yes! He's going in with the mince now, which is actually nice and brown. And we're also gonna take it up a notch even more. We're probably gonna to need to give this another 15 to 20 minutes so that it's all nice and softened and cooked through. But one other thing I'm gonna do, again, this is my choice. I quite like the idea of doing a sloppy joe vibe on this. A couple of squirts of that. This is like the mild yellow mustard stuff that you get when I generally have a cheeseburger because in this recipe, I can't get that vibe of mustard that I want on there or ketchup. So I've also got some burger sauce, okay? This is like a Big Mac kind of sauce. Again, optional. If you want, just do the mince. That would be pretty boring. This is the fun thing about cooking. You put your own spin on it. Waka waka waka, DJ frying pan. And if you've never made sloppy joes before, very American thing, but I discovered them when I was over there in Boston. Oh my gosh. To be honest, right now, <laughs> I would just happily sit, watch Cobra Kai, love it, uh, with a spoon and eat that. Instead, I've got to put it into a pie with that random mixture over there. <laughs> oh gosh. Hark, is that the sound of a jumbo jet flying over my house? No, it's my extractor fan just because it got a little bit hot in here. There we go, you see the color on there? I could have pushed it a little bit more. I'm just in that unknown zone where I don't really know where this is going. I'm a simple man. Like I said, I'd love to just slap some cheese on that and eat it, but we do now need cheese. And I learned this from the website that I'm reading. Apparently, you know when you buy that pre-grated cheese, that's covered in starch. So when you try and do a cheese pool, which I tried to do quite a bit last year, it doesn't quite do it because the starch restricts it. So apparently a block of cheese grated, that's actually uh, good for your cheese pool. So let's look out for that this year. Let's try and make a, a six mile cheese pool. So just while this cools down, if you're not already subscribed, smash that subscribe button. And remember, if you're not a patron, please consider uh, becoming one because we started doing behind the scenes vlogs, which is extended videos and early access to the video you're watching right now. We kind of have a little, I'm calling it the Patreon vlog club, I think. It's cool, you have gotta check it out. Well, here we go then folks, in the words of uh, Biff Tannen, batter up. I don't know if you can see in the background here, I'm just giving it another whisk because it's settled. Uh, I'm gonna whisk it and pour it quite quickly. So let's go straight on there okay let's get you all uh, evenly i'm trying to tilt it can you see how it's gone sort of one side more than the other come on right <laughs> look at the lumps of like flour oh my gosh we get every nick and cranny out but it did say lumpy is the best and last of all to mask it we're putting some cheese on top but apparently this should form a crust i'm not going too crazy on it I feel like the cheese will kind of give it a shield with the beef so it doesn't burn too much, but it's going in the oven now, apparently for 20 minutes. Or 25 if you're feeling cheeky. In it goes. And I'll see it, I nearly touched my hand on the oven. 20 minutes. Also, how are you keeping mate, you been all right? It's got like a grease stain there. I wonder what video that happened. It's almost like a birthmark. We're gonna keep that. Whilst that's baking then, uh, quick shout out, I'm gonna pick a social media platform at random from time to time. Today's Twitter, latest follower, Christabel Lasbon. There we are. Thanks uh, for following me. <laughs> All right, six minutes to get. Oh, can you see that? It looks like a, like a tart. That's the cheese, but I don't, I, I have no idea what's happening underneath that. That is the crazy cool thing. Um, it's, I just came over because the smells like amazing. The cheese is bubbling around the edge. It's starting to get like a little bit of a sheet of cheese on there. Whether we want that to firm up, I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. Phoebe said it's a cheeseburger pie. It's an impossible pie because I can see little bits of like a crust underneath the cheese. The cheese is masking it. It smells like cookies. It's just like a huge patty, isn't it, a burger? 
try and get under it. <laughs> wow, okay. That's, that's so different. It smells a bit like cottage pie. That's actually amazing. Our pourable pastry, I guess that's kind of what it was, has sort of held it together and fused it really firm. I didn't get it out amazingly. There's still a little bit left there, but you can see how the bit on the top has actually formed that crust in some areas. This, I just don't know what this can taste like. Got some volunteers here, uh, some splodges of mustard and some more burger sauce. Uh, if we need it, I'm gonna try it on its own. Oh wow. You know what that tastes of? What does it taste of? Cottage pie. Mm. It does taste like a cottage pie. I was gonna say it tastes like a pasty. I was just thinking that it's a combination of a cottage pie and a Cornish pasty. Yeah, the actual filling in the middle was tiny reminds me of the texture of like cooked potatoes. Oh. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not really yummy. I wanna try it with some sauce though. Is that a hidden gherkin? There is a gherkin, hand. sorry. And the sauce, that really just suddenly take it from being like, I don't know, kind of like a, a mincy dish to suddenly you're back in cheeseburger territory. Because when you eat that, I was kind of expecting a cheeseburger hit immediately. Okay. Same. Yeah? I thought it would taste like a cheeseburger. Yeah, it looked like a huge cheeseburger, didn't it? Mm. But the sauce, that's rather stonk. I actually Delicious. would make that again, mm, definitely. I would. Very nice. They do a dessert version. They do like a lemon and a cherry pie and stuff as well. Haribo pie. <laughs> there we go then, folks. I'm going to leave Chloe to it. Haribo pie coming soon, right? <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, as I say, don't forget to subscribe, follow me on social media, and if you try this, tag me in your attempts on your social media platform of choice. I'll see you very soon. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. You should make this.